controversy over the Colonel Kemp affair um, is really the tip of an iceberg in terms of the <coughs> slow, or some would say, increasingly quick erosion of civil liberties in, in Australia, when you think that there are as much as 64 pieces of anti-terrorist legislation on the books. Jake, who is a focus of attention in this controversy, along with about half a dozen students and other people who were involved in the controversy at the lecture. Jake will try to be here later, he's got another commitment, but he wants me to say to all of you how grateful he is for the support you've given him um, over the past several weeks. I won't name them, but there are several colleagues on the bench here and in the, in the audience who've been amazingly gutsy but also highly sophisticated advocates for a sense of justice and without those qualities and that commitment we are all lost so Jake wishes me to uh, uh, express his gratitude in that respect and the the role of the the online journal New Matilda is also merits a mention because if well, it's it's made more of a dent in the conservative assumptions and often the laziness of the mainstream media than any other journal in my view. And so I hope for members at least of the audience of politics in the pub that new Matilda would become almost a first port of call if it hasn't been before. The topic is Colonel Kemp, Israeli army morality, uh, the right to protest and the University of Sydney as a judge and jury. Now, the two speakers have both been involved in what Paolo Freire called the conscientization of people, making people far more aware than they would otherwise have been about the issues. Um, Michael Brawl is uh, uh, a lawyer now, and almost a lawyer, um, uh, but also a very important uh, journalist with New Matilda. So Michael's going to open the proceedings, and Michael's important in particular because the analysis of the video films which he wrote almost before the films were made because that seems to be one of Michael's skills <laughs> uh, quick off the mark it's called um, formed the sort of baseline for subsequent <laughs> arguments about uh, did what. The last time Stuart asked me to speak at Politics in the Pub I was asked to discuss the influence of Zionism in Australia uh, during my speech, I reviewed some cases of people being accused of anti-Semitism in Australia. Uh, they included John Pilger, Stuart Rees, uh, Ilan Pape, Norman Finkelstein, Hanana Shrawi, Anthony Lowenstein, and me. Um, the reason we were called anti-Semitic uh, was basically that we said mean things about the Israeli government in its past. Um, as you can tell, clearly a lot has changed in the last six years. Um, as I have already written at length about the protest against Colonel Kemp, as Stuart said, uh, I'm not going to rehash at length uh, what I think happened. Uh, those interested can Google my article at New Matilda, it's called Blaming the Victims. Um, in that article I reviewed the uh, three film videos that were filmed by Jake Lynch, uh, and I showed how they refuted the lies being told about him and the protesters by Ajak, uh, Orges, um, Ekadj, The Jewish News, and by Colonel Kemp himself. Uh, in the rest of my talk, I want to do a few things. Uh, first, I want to review some of the developments since my article. Uh, then I'll try to give a, a bit of context uh, to what's happened. And uh, because this is a left-wing audience, and hopefully it's a friendly audience, uh, I wanted to give some friendly advice about why I think the protest, uh, and more broadly BDS itself, uh, are not wisely chosen tactics. Uh, on the media coverage. Uh, after New Matilda posted videos of the protest online, uh, I think there was no noticeable shift in media coverage of the protest. Um, and uh, this surprised me. Uh, I have pretty low expectations of uh, the media when it comes to these things. Uh, I expected the Murdoch press to be shameless, and you know it usually is, and uh, Fairfax to be cowardly, which well, it basically was. Um, uh, now, no one admitted that the claims of orgies and so on were lies. Uh, no one admitted that Jake hadn't actually stood on chairs and shouted in the face of students and so on. Uh, they weren't true, but um, the usual suspects started to back off the claims that he was anti-Semitic. 
Uh, so on March 20, the Jewish News, which isn't a great paper, um, they covered the controversy. Uh, and their reporting was actually pretty honest. Uh, so they reported that the woman had slapped at Jake and tried to kick him. Uh, the, and the editorial, which said that Jake must go, um, but it conspicuously didn't accuse him of anti-Semitism uh, for threatening to sue her and for waving some money at her. Um, they said the woman's behavior was not acceptable, uh, but thought his behavior was provocative and uh, not conciliatory enough. Um, and we can argue about uh, how polite academics should be when they're being physically assaulted. Um, but uh, clearly the claims of anti-Semitism were too ludicrous uh, even for the Jewish establishment. Um, to my knowledge, there was only one exception among the major media outlets, which were willing to continue entertaining the fantasies of orgies, uh, and that was The Guardian. Uh, the Guardian has a reputation for being quite progressive, uh, but uh, it seemed to have its own guardians uh, when it comes to these issues. Um, so it gave space to Dean Show from Orgies, uh, who wrote a pretty shameless op-ed uh, about what happened. Uh, he referred to the account uh, by Jake Lynch, but then said Jake's claims were, and this is a quote, disputed by witnesses, um, like Ajak and uh, by Colonel Kemp. Uh, and this is a quote, he said, irrespective of who struck first, um, which uh, Sho wrote and The Guardian published. Um, so this just casually insinuated that Jake struck someone, and it wasn't clear who struck the other person first. Um, and y we should remember, we have video footage of what happened. Uh, we know the woman struck at Jake, um, because the video footage shows us what happened pretty clearly. Um, the video footage was uh, conclusive enough for the Jewish News, um, which still wanted Jake to be fired, they weren't biased in his favour, um, but the video footage was apparently too ambiguous for The Guardian. Um, the Guardian later ran what they called an editor's note, uh, not a correction. It noted uh, that what Jake claimed about the event, uh, and uh, it's observed that the events and footage of them is the subject of an inquiry, um, but uh, The Guardian apparently couldn't tell what the footage showed. Um, and of course, uh, Sher from Orges also accused Lynch of an offensive gesture which evoked a crude anti-Semitic falsehood. Um, but the major Jewish organization seemed to find this line of attack embarrassing. Uh, so Peter Wertheim, who's the head of uh, ECATCH, um, the national representative body, um, Peter Wertheim, the head of ECATCH, the national representative body, uh, now claims that the real question is whether Jake's alleged baiting of the woman who attacked him and his wife was a disproportionate reaction uh, to her behavior, uh, not anti-Semitism, a charge that he, cl that he claims is uh, not leveled uh, lightly. Um, now, uh, you since Professor Rutland might have missed that memo. Um, she claimed that when the protesters chanted Free Palestine, uh, what they mean, this is a quote, what they mean is the dismantling of the Zionist entity, which means genocide against Israel's Jewish population. So when protesters chant Free Palestine, they're saying kill all of the Jews. Um, remember, anti-Semitism is not a charge level lightly. Um, so another case was um, Alex Rivchin. Uh, he's the public affairs director of ECAJ, the national body, remember. Uh, he wrote for The Australian about what he claims is called the scholarship and this will all be a quote, around the racially infused use of terms such as Jewish lobby, Zionist lobby, and Israel lobby, all of which mean the same thing. The term is intended to cast the involvement of the Jewish community in public affairs as somehow subversive, undemocratic, and inherently sinister. It is intended to appeal to anti-Semitic views of the Jews. Um, so l let me just repeat that. The public affairs director for the major Jewish representative organization uh, which lobbies in support of Israel, and more generally on behalf of the Jewish community, uh, claim that it is anti-Semitic to use terms like Jewish lobby or Zionist lobby. Um, and, and yet, even he uh, isn't willing to say that Jake or the protesters were anti-Semitic. Even he thinks that's too much. Um, and because I can't resist, I'll give one more example uh, of uh, Alex Rupchin's style. Um, so this is his reaction to a Guardian column, which just in passing, a, had like one brief criticism of Goldman Sachs. Uh, so Rivchin wrote, uh, take away from uh, Owen Jones's uh, Guardian column, if you dislike Rupert Murdoch and bankers with Jewish names, vote Labour. Um, so as it turns out, criticizing Goldman Sachs is a form of anti-Semitism. Um, and again, even he doesn't think Jake's anti-Semitic. 
Um, so he's finally come across an uh, accusation of anti-Semitism, which was too ridiculous for him, uh, this ludicrous uh, campaign against Jake Lynch. Um, so Rivchin took a different tack. He argued that the protesters uh, trying to prevent Colonel Kemp from speaking uh, were launching an attack on freedom of speech. Um, I'll return to this issue, uh, but I think he was correct in saying that uh, Colonel Kemp should have been allowed to talk. Um, with the exception of Orchards and the Guardian sticking to their guns, uh, the retreat from the anti-Semitism claim paved the way for the University of Sydney to clear Jake of anti-Semitism. Uh, once that happened, uh, Fairfax found a little bit of courage, which I obviously I don't like Fairfax much, but they did. Um, uh, once they did, they started reporting on what happened. And they reported that he was still at risk uh, for being fired for breaches of the university code, um, for not being uh, respectful and courteous. Um, and some of the protesters are also under investigation, uh, and they have all been gagged from speaking about what happened. Um, I want to stress the importance of this issue. A group of students are being threatened with expulsion from university because they engaged in a protest uh, on campus. Uh, if, they, if they're disciplined for it, it will be a shocking blow against student activism. Um, even the investigation and threat of action against protesters can have a chilling effect um, and may serve to deter people from engaging in university protests, especially against the Israeli government. Uh, yet none of the Jewish organizations, which so recently have discovered the value of freedom of speech, have expressed any concerns uh, on this issue. And of course, neither have the free speech champions at the IPA or the Murdoch Press and everyone else who loved freedom of speech when Andrew Bolt wasn't allowed to say horrible things about Aboriginal people. Um, the New South Wales Council for Civil Liberties uh, spoke out in defense of Jake and the students, and um, Julian Burnside also uh, was quoted in Fairfax uh, in support of Jake. Uh, and I should say that uh, UCID staff at BDS, including uh, David Brophy, launched a very successful uh, petition, uh, which got the support of people like Chomsky and um, uh, Desmond Tutu. Um, I think it's interesting to compare what happened uh, at U University of Sydney with a symposium on Palestine that took place at the University of New South Wales. Um, naturally, there was outrage and disgust voiced at um, this one-sided event uh, in uh, the Jewish news. Um, I attended the event, and um, as it happened, so did uh, someone called Gil Solomon. He was a very determined heckler, uh, and he actually is also a journalist. Um, so among the theories that he's written about in his journalism is that Obama is a Kenyan Muslim who supports radical Islam and has Muslim Brotherhood advisors. Um, and it goes on, he, the things he said. Uh, anyway, so he routinely interrupted speakers. He repeatedly demanded that he be allowed to argue with them more and that he wasn't allowed to respond to more of them and take up more time. Uh, and uh, during a break, he also took the opportunity to personally abuse uh, Peter Slezak. Um, uh, though his behavior was in many ways comparable to the uh, UCID protesters, um, there was no national outrage, there was no uh, media coverage, uh, there was no talk about the crisis of freedom of speech. Um, the security guards said the event set outside, they didn't roughly throw him out or drag him out by his legs or anything like that. Um, so I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions about what this comparison shows. Um, However, I'd like to point out the corollary that I think people on the left should appreciate. Um, just as you may not like what Colonel Kemp has to say, uh, so many Zionists uh, disapprove of what BDS proponents have to say. Uh, at a university, people should be allowed to discuss controversial political issues. Um, if the Palestine Symposium had been drowned out by a group of Zionists, outraged at the existence of people with contrary opinions, uh, would we welcome that development? Um, since embracing and practicing BDS, Jake Lynch has been the target of aggressive bullying. Uh, Shurat Hadin is an Israeli organization uh, which WikiLeaks cable shows has a history of coordinating cases with Israeli intelligence. Um, they sued Jake for boycotting an Israeli academic, um, but as it happens, every major Jewish organization distanced itself from the claim, um, from the case, uh, presumably because it never had any chance of success. Um, Ajak complained that they hadn't been consulted on the case. Uh, Ekash complained that it would be a shot in the arm to BDS. Uh, after Jake won the case, an anonymous leader said, pathetic, they leave us to pick up the pieces. It's just amazing. 
um, and then Shura Hadin launched a sharp attack on Australia's Jewish leaders, uh, saying that, and this is a quote, they cannot point to even one thing they did to protest uh, Lynch's behaviour or safeguard the rights of Israeli academics. If the local Australian leadership wants to pretend it doesn't need to join the fight and stand up for Jewish rights, that's its problem. We in Israel demand that every act of Jew hatred be forcefully responded to. Um, all of that was reported in uh, Israel, in Haaretz. Uh, Australian media basically abstained from critical coverage of Shura Hadin. Uh, and approximately zero Australians spoke up in support uh, in the media against illegal things, which was a blatant act of political censorship. Um, and I say an act of political censorship, not an attempt at it, um, because forcing Jake to fight a lengthy court battle was a tremendous drain of time, energy, and financial resources. Um, no Chomsky uh, observes that political trials are rarely lost, uh, whatever the verdict of the courts. Judicial persecution rarely serves quite well to immobilize people and to destroy organizations with limited resources or to condemn them to ineffectiveness. The hours and dollars devoted to legal defense are not spent in education, organization, and positive action. Um, and then the campaign continued. Uh, in December 2012, uh, Julie Bishop, who was then the shadow foreign affairs spokeswoman, that's a good reaction. <laughs> the correct reaction, I would say, um, announced that Foreign Minister Bob Carr should institute a policy across government that ensures no grant of taxpayers' funds are provided uh, to individuals or organizations which actively support the BDS campaign. Uh, and uh, we can guess about the effect this has on academics and their willingness to express public criticisms of the Israeli government. Um, the attempts to suppress BDS advocacy uh, the cases brought against uh, Jake the Max, and the Max Brenner protesters, the endless Nazi comparisons in the Murdoch press, um, they've, re they've received amazingly little critical scrutiny. Uh, and part of this is the constant invocation of anti-Semitism, but I think that part of this is just the sheer cowardice among media and intellectuals. Um, as I am, I hope, among friends in a progressive left-wing environment, uh, I want to conclude by offering some friendly advice on advocacy and activism. Um, firstly, on the issue of anti-Semitism, uh, it deserves to be taken seriously. There is anti-Semitism in the world and in Australia, and it should not be left to Jews to recognize it and to oppose it. Um, when organizations like ECAJ and just cheapen the issue by cynically exploiting it for political advocacy, they should be condemned uh, for it by Jews and by non-Jews. Um, Non-Jews should not allow themselves to be bullied out of discussing Israel and Palestine by these cheap smears. Um, secondly, it seems clear to me that some of the tactics that are being employed in uh, advocacy for the Palestinians uh, is at best unwise and counterproductive. Um, so the protest that aimed to shut down the Kemp talk, uh, firstly it failed to do so. It gave uh, the talk and uh, Kemp himself a great deal of publicity. And all of the ensuing discussion has been about whether the protesters are anti-Semitic or uh, whether freedom of speech is under attack. Um, and predictably, virtually none of the discussion uh, uh, well, I mean, but, okay, firstly, virtually none of the discussion was uh, from supporters of the protest. The exceptions were a couple of articles in Yimitola and Crikey by Nick Rima, um, who took up the arguments about freedom of speech and anti-Semitism, um, but he hardly mentioned Palestine, or even the views of Kim. Um, so in terms of raising awareness about what Israel has done to Gaza, or Kim's shocking apologetics for Israeli war crimes, um, the protests have been a complete failure. Um, Zionists speak and write uh, in favor of the Israeli government all the time in Australia. Um, so I don't think, like, what harm would have come from letting this one speak? Um, furthermore, the protesters' transparent disinterest in freedom of speech is, if nothing else, tactically disastrous. If Jake and the protesting students are expelled from UCID, uh, won't we complain that they that have violated their freedom of speech? Uh, if you only defend freedom of speech for people who agree with you, you, you won't have credibility on the issue. Um, so I think it's very important to be consistent that we can hold them to the same standards we want to be held to. Um, finally, and this is so we can have a lively Q&A period, I wanted to briefly discuss BDS. Um, so I understand that Palestinian NGOs have endorsed a particular type of boycotts, divestment, and sanctions. Um, and it seems to many that the way to practice proper solidarity is by signing on uh, with exactly what's been called for. Um, however, whilst Palestinians may be in the best position to evaluate tactical questions in Palestine, 
uh, that doesn't mean that they have the most insight into effective political tactics in Australia. Um, the goal of political advocacy and activism should not be about proving one's purity. It should be about weighing up political circumstances and devising tactics that will be uh, effective in concrete socio-political circumstances here and now uh, to achieve social change. Um, thank you. Um, if activists on, say, the issue of asylum seekers wanted to plan for a big protest, uh, they would probably, or they would presumably organize it on, say, the weekend, uh, so that they could, they could get a bigger turnout in a weekday. Uh, I think it's unlikely that they would anxiously await instructions from, say, Afghanistan or Sri Lanka on when's the best day to hold the protest. Um, there may be a particular day that resonates in a particular country, um, but that would just be one factor to consider. It wouldn't be the only and uh, sole and determining issue for the campaign. Um, when it comes to boycotts, divestments, and sanctions in Australia, uh, my view is we should recognise that uh, Palestine solidarity activism is not in a very strong position. Uh, most calls for BDS are purely symbolic and they're not actually implemented uh, because few people know much about the issues and it is very rare that serious critical discussion is allowed about Israel in the mainstream media. Um, so if a symbolic call for boycotts, divestments and sanctions is already on Tindal terrain, um, why make life harder for ourselves by calling for boycotts of chocolate shops or uh, an Israeli novelist? No one really understands and on the rare occasions when activists are allowed to express their views, they've been left trying to explain how a chocolate shop is part of the oppression of the Palestinians. Um, so compare this to calls that have flown under the radar. Uh, ben Saul, who was a professor of international law at the University of Sydney, uh, called for a targeted boycott uh, of Israel, and he first called for that, to my knowledge, in 2011. Um, last year, he wrote that Australia should, uh, this is a quote, Australia should prohibit all economic dealings with the Israeli government, settlements, and companies in relation to the occupied territories. Um, since then, though he's faced some criticisms for his uh, uh, Palestine advocacy, it has been nothing like the backlash against supporters of the official BDS. Um, likewise, Amnesty International supports an arms embargo against Israel. Um, but they've also been left alone by the usual suspects. Well, why is this? Um, my view is, is because the official BDS program seems to be regarded as a weak link. Um, BDS advocates, activ activists like to claim the fury they arouse uh, is a sign of their effectiveness. Um, but my view is... I'm on a side. Yeah. Um, uh, so BDS activists like to claim the fury they arouse is a sign of their effectiveness. The truth appears to be that they are singled out because their tactics are harder to make sense of than BDS directed at settlements, or at the Israeli military. Um, why do we want to boycott a military that just killed 2,200 Palestinians and devastated Gaza? You know, why do we want to boycott racially exclusive colonies on stolen Palestinian lands? The answer is obvious. Um, so that may not be the official BDS program, uh, but given the state of public awareness about the question of Palestine, I think those are the kind of tactics that would be the most effective in conveying an effective and understandable message. Woo!